Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. Remember being a teenager? I bet you remember all the cringy stuff you were doing during that time. Getting an after school job, acting like you're way more cool than the rest of the people in the same grade as you, liking something you think is embarrassing so you try to keep it a secret, going to Teen Nick for nostalgia over shows you used to watch as a kid, defying all odds and somehow getting cigarettes and alcohol so you could smoke and drink underage. Nah, I'm too old for this. That's better. Even though Nickelodeon acknowledges Spongebob and only Spongebob these days, they had a wild variety of programs back then and some iconic sub-brands in which most of them are forgotten these days. There's Nick Jr. which is still around and shows educational programming. Nicktoons is probably the most iconic because their animated shows were top notch back then, for the most part. And there were the Nicktoons crossover saga video games back then too. Moving on, Nick and Knight showed more mature oriented programs and was a cool way to fill their overnight block. But my personal favorite was and always will be Teen Nick. Teen Nick was a pay TV channel that mostly broadcasted Nickelodeon's live action programs, whether they were canceled or still on the air, and also had some other original programs. But let's put an asterisk on original because most of that original programming wasn't owned by Nickelodeon and they just had the rights to air it on Teen Nick. Eventually, it got to a point where it aired only the old live action Nickelodeon shows and now... Huh, I haven't seen Teen Nick in forever. I wonder if it still exists. Ah, oh, hey look, it does still exist. That's nice to see. I wonder what they're showing nowadays. Wow, what happened here? Well, to find out, let's start at the beginning. Back in 1992, Nickelodeon launched a special Saturday night block called SNCC, which was primarily aimed at tweens and teenagers, and broadcasted mostly their live action shows at the time, like Clarissa Explains It All, Cousin Skeeter, etc. Fast forward to 1999, MTV Networks, the owners of Nickelodeon at the time, and Sesame Workshop co-founded Noggin, a channel whose intent was to be used for educational programming and very little else. In March 2001, Nickelodeon launched Teen Nick, a celebrity-hosted programming block aimed towards older audiences. It was similar to SNCC, but with some key differences, such as this aired on Sundays instead of Saturdays. They also launched Nick Gas, and no Nickelodeon did not pollute the atmosphere in 2001. Gas was short for Games and Sports, which primarily broadcasted past Nickelodeon game shows like Double Dare and Figure It Out. I didn't even know this was a thing until now. The following year, on April 1st, 2002, Noggin launched a new kind of programming block meant for primetime and overnight. This program block would also focus its episode on content for teenagers, which was unheard of for a channel focused on educational programming at the time. This block was also how everybody's favorite Canadian teen franchise Degrassi aired in the US, with the new series Degrassi The Next Generation. Side tangent, but I find it so interesting that The N, the programming block for Noggin, the all-educational channel, aired Degrassi, a mature franchise that covers issues like drug abuse or sexual harassment, but Nick and Knight did not. Anyway, in 2005, Teen Nick was broadcast on Saturday nights, replacing SNCC. But the programming itself didn't change. It still aired the live action shows that were on at the time, like Drake and Josh and Zoe 101, as well as new shows when they came out, like iCarly or True Jackson VP. On December 31st, 2007, Nick Gas shut down, and in its place was basically everything The End was showing for 24 hours a day. On September 28, 2009, Nickelodeon rebranded themselves going from the orange splat logo everybody loves to this orange font text with no splat. They dropped the Team Nick branding with their weekend programming blocks, and the 24-hour The End programming became simply Team Nick. Several live-action programs from Nickelodeon, whether they were still airing new episodes or not, started being broadcasted on Team Nick and reruns. New shows that came out after this logo existed, like Big Time Russian Victorious, also aired on Team Nick. 
Starting in 2011, TeamVig used its overnight programming block to broadcast reruns of Nickelodeon programs from the 90s. And not just the live action shows like All That and Keaton and Kel, but even animated shows like Rugrats, Ren and Stimpy, Cat Dog, etc. It was originally called The 90s Are All That, and even featured Keaton Thompson himself to help promote it. Now back in the summer of 2012, my family and I drove down to North Carolina to celebrate my uncle. We all stayed in this big rental house, and I had the basement all to myself. It had a pool table, a flat screen, a recliner with a lever, and two bedrooms. The last night we were staying there, I was looking at the TV guide and found something that shocked me. Something I thought I'd never see again. Victorious. I found the Team Nick channel and saw that they were broadcasting reruns of shows like Ned's Declassified School Survival Guide, Drake and Josh, and so on. And when I switched to it, it was showing a rerun of the Victorious episode, The Gorilla Club, which aired earlier that year. But I was amazed when I found out this existed. When my family and I arrived home, I went up to my grandma's room to watch Team Nick again. Since it was a pay TV channel, the only TVs in our house that could access a channel like this were the TV in the main room and the one in my grandma's room. So when I got home, I ran up to my grandma's room and put on Team Nick, and the first thing I saw was a rerun of the Drake and Josh episode, Helen's Surgery, one of my favorite episodes as a kid. Seeing that episode, I thought I wouldn't get to see again now on this new TV channel with this new colorful bumper felt both surreal and magical. Since Spongebob and these three live action shows were still on regular Nickelodeon, I didn't full blown convert to Team Nick yet, but I still came back here quite a bit. iCarly ended in November 2012 and Victorious ended on February 2nd, 2013. Around that time, I increased my Team Nick viewership tenfold, and I officially discovered The Amanda Show for the first time and was laughing so hard at it. I also watched Keenan and Kel and All That for the first time via the 90s or All That block and discovered that Nickelodeon starting on June 8, 2013 was too scared to release new live action shows with actual humor in it. Roughly around the same time, I also got my first proper exposure to Unfabulous, which was big around the time of Drake and Josh and Zoe 101. I never got around to watching it back then, and I don't know why, but watching it on Team Nick years later made me fall in love with it. Big Time Rush also ended on July 25th, 2013, and since there were no more actual good live action shows, I pretty much was now only on Team Nick, aside from a new sporadic SpongeBob episode. Around this time, you couldn't watch Team Nick without being bombarded with promos for Degrassi, especially for season 13. There was also the occasional advertising for other Team Nick shows, most notably Life with Boys, Alien Surf Girls, and H2O, Just Add Water. Team Nick launched its own program called Team Nick Top 10, which was a countdown of that week's 10 most popular music videos, hosted by Nick Cannon and featuring a celebrity guest star every week. I didn't really feel like watching them, mainly because I was more interested in the nostalgia. Either way, this was my life for a good while from this point. Coming home from high school, turning on Team Nick to see whatever was on at the time, having those shows on audibly in the background while I was doing math and science homework, seeing the colorful bumpers shown alongside these shows, experiencing my first true nostalgia rush, it was such a lovely time. Now. For you youngins out there being raised on streaming services who don't know what bumpers are, I feel sorry for you. Bumpers are short 5 to 10 second clips that would play right as a show breaks for commercial or right as the commercial break was over. Just say, we'll be right back with this show or now back to this show on this channel. I feel sorry for you. The show specific bumpers all followed the same format using a clip from whatever show was on, adding a green, blue, or pink filter to it, an instrumental jingle playing, and using text to form a cringy pun to say, we'll be right back, or we're back, based on whatever clip was on screen. For example, there's this Drake and Josh bumper where Drake is dangling from a ceiling fan, and the text says, hang in there, back in the gym. I just like seeing the clips from the bumpers to see if I remember what episode they were from, rather than seeing the text pop up. 
Something about the fact that there was just music and no narration in the bumper just felt appropriate for the programs being shown, the fact that I was a teenager at the time, and what they were going for at the time with their marketing. There wasn't anything wrong with narration, not at all. I just felt that this format was perfect in an odd way that's hard to describe. And those weren't the only good Teen Nick bumpers at this time. You also got standard commercials where Teen Nick was just showing what they were airing. This commercial has the tagline, Best Time Ever. We also have some other commercials with a crowd of teens giving unrealistic expectations of what teenagehood is like. Four standard commercials in total, featuring either a dance party, a pool party, a bike ride that transitions to movie night, and three girls making cupcakes. All four of them had the Best Time Ever tagline too. They also made bumpers using clips from these commercials, also using text with cringy puns, but less cringy than the show specific ones. I don't know what shows these were used for, but I do remember seeing them every so often. All these bumpers and commercials weren't anything to write home about, but I liked these so much more than whatever regular Nickelodeon's bumpers were at the time. As a teenager at this time, I could just relate to these more. The one with the cupcakes features my fifth wildest dream, a girl kissing a guy on the cheek while she has frosting all over her face. I also like this one because this girl right here is a safety hazard, which is also one of my favorite pastimes. I will say in regards to this one, who puts dish soap in a pool? I never tried it, but I wonder if that would be a better way to clean dirty dishes than with a hose. It's more efficient to clean dishes this way, Mr. Krabs. All these shows and bumpers at this time had a special theme to them and indicated that anything that wasn't on the overnight block at the time all had some kind of synergy to it that made them all feel like they could stand on their own in some way on Teen Nick. This commercial in particular, showing a mix of older Nickelodeon live action shows and the Teen Nick exclusive programs, was a perfect representation of what Teen Nick was at the time. All these programs and these bumpers, you will feel like you are having the best time ever. To be fair, drinking alcohol does the same thing to you. But it was just fun to get to relive these shows in a different way and to appreciate them in new ways. Until it wasn't. Okay, so as previously stated, the live action shows after Victorious ended weren't very enjoyable, so that was another reason why I wanted to keep watching Team Nick. Newer shows at the time like The Thundermans, Henry Danger, and so forth looked not funny. So being on Teen Nick was a good way to forget about them. But then Teen Nick started advertising them, which wasn't great. And over the next couple of years, several of those shows started to air on Teen Nick as well. I get it. This was for Nickelodeon's live action shows, but these aren't the live action shows that a teen will care about. There's a reason why so many people remember all of these shows so fondly after all these years. Why I can go back to any of them any day of the week, whether it's a handful of episodes or the whole show. And watching reruns of them on the channel that features a show where a teenager gets hammered at a rich guy's house party never felt out of place to me. Why is that? Well, it's because regardless of the concept of the show, there was always something in those shows where teenagers could truly relate to, especially the drama. Drake and Josh was inspired and relatable because of these two polar opposites of teenagers becoming stepbrothers and friends. The school survival tips in Ned's Declassified were genuinely helpful for teenagers in middle school and high school, myself included. Zoe 101, Unfabulous, and Victorious all felt like genuine groups of teenagers interacting with each other, whether for comedy or drama reasons, and no matter the setting we're talking about. I could keep going. Well, except for the Amanda show, there are some inspired ideas in there for sure, but I would go back to that because it's funny more than anything. All I'm saying! The two said bang, bang, bang! Which means hush! As for all the other shows I don't feel like mentioning the names of, it's fine when they aired on Nickelodeon whether they were bad or anti-bad. Variety is the spice of life, but in this case, that spice is the world's hottest hot sauce. You know, the one that causes internal damage if consumed directly? But in my opinion, they all felt out of place when they were being shown on Team Nick because they all feel way too gimmicky to be inspired. The Thundermans and Henry Danger focusing on superheroes or sidekicks? 
but they don't really care about drama to make it interesting, unlike The Incredibles. Game Shakers being about a handful of kids starting their own mobile video game company and have a rap superstar as their business partner? Where's the realism in that? And if I didn't want to watch Every Which Way on Nickelodeon, what makes you think I want to watch it on Teen Nick? If I didn't want it out there, what makes you think I'd find it more appealing in here? Now thankfully, they weren't being shown a ton, and the shows I actually cared about in some way were still being broadcasted more often than not. But as time went on, the good shows were slowly being phased out. Hell, The Amanda Show and Unfabulous were just gone altogether way before 2016. On August 2nd, 2015, Degrassi aired its final episode, and the actual Team Nick exclusive programming was being shown less and less as time went on. By 2017, Team Nick Top 10 was the only thing Team Nick still had to call its own compared to Nickelodeon, and that ended in 2018, which by coincidence was also the year I truly stopped watching Team Nick. Oh, it's no coincidence. By 2019, it was only old Nickelodeon shows, which would have been fine with me, if they didn't show any of the horrible programming that didn't appeal to any teenagers. The same year, they also rebranded again, replacing the cool relatable bumpers with these flipbook animations of stock images. Teen Nick really went downhill at this time too. I don't know how this could relate to teenagers at all with how these things are edited. Looking at these bumpers, these feel like producers from Teen Nick crashed a party and filmed some b-roll to use for bumpers because teenagers love to party. There's some slow motion here and there, but nothing super flashy or any over the top special effects. Just a nice fun gathering with a lot of people. And there are actual songs by actual real life artists playing in these bumpers, not just generic stock music to appeal to lowest common denominator people. As for these, I never saw teenagers walk like a flipbook animation. This one especially makes me sad because this one involves making cupcakes. There's already a bumper about teenagers making cupcakes! More and more shows were being phased out over time, even the bad shows they put on here because fuck it. And bringing us to this day where the lineup is and the bumpers are just copy and pasted from Nickelodeon's 2023 rebrand. Oh. Now I don't blame Nickelodeon or Teen Nick for not making unique bumpers for Teen Nick if nobody's watching it anymore. It's just sad, cause not only are these new bumpers patronizing, but these bumpers gave Teen Nick personality to make it stand out from Nickelodeon and Nicktoons. And now since there's no more personality, they might as well just kill Teen Nick. Or at the very least, rename it to Henry Nanger and very little else. So they might as well just kill it. It's just sad seeing Teen Nick devolve into something so awful that feels like it's being run by degenerates. If it was back how it was in 2012 or 2013, with the good live action shows and the Teen Nick exclusive programs like Degrassi and Life with Boys, then I'd probably be watching that way more than Paramount Plus, even if 2004's Mean Girls is on there. Now most of the content on Teen Nick is available for streaming elsewhere, so that's nice. But in my opinion, the biggest loss is definitely the bumpers, purely because they gave Teen Nick that much more personality that is lost in these current days. I'll always cherish the time I spent watching Teen Nick back in the day, showing the programs I loved when I was a kid, watching The Amanda Show and Unfabulous for the first time, giving me something to do while my friends had jobs, calling me handsome. It was a great highlight of that time in my teenagehood when I didn't have anything else to do. And I'm glad I got to experience Teen Nick during its peak as a standalone channel. Also, in the context of the movie night commercial, who filmed the pool party? While Teen Nick nowadays will never be what it used to be back in 2012-2015 or so, the aura it gave off during that time had such a positive vibe to it. Couple that with the nostalgia it invoked for me while I was going through my high school years, it was such a charming experience that I never would have known I would need otherwise. So I'll always be thankful I got to experience Teen Nick around that time. And all this nostalgia puts me in the mood for something else I did as a teenager. Going back to the playground to trade secrets. Between you and me, I'm not happy. Uh, we didn't do this as teenagers. In fact, we never did this. 